Are you ready to take the challenge? That's the question. And I believe the answer is yes. And I'm going to share why and how H AI is being used in HR. I've actually spent the last six months creating the content for a five-week online course and identifying about two dozen what I call HR pioneers, how they're using AI to totally transform and enhance the employee experience. And that, I think, is the big issue. We've talked, we had a lot of hand raising about how many people are in HR or not in HR. Um, how many people can see themselves working side by side with a chat bot or an intelligent assistant? How many people, ah, well, you're absolutely right because the recent survey by Gartner predicts that by the year 2022, one in five of us, one, two, three, four, five, are going to be working side by side with um, some type of intelligent assistant. So here's three questions I'm going to address tonight and uh, look forward to many more questions on the panel. What is AI? I'm coming right after somebody from IBM, but I've just interviewed someone from IBM for my Forbes c column, so I'm, I'm using the official IBM definition. <laughs> um, how, I think this is the really interesting question. We, we're not gonna debate any longer if AI is gonna be used in the workplace. Of course it is, right? The question is how and what are you gonna do about it? How do you identify stakeholders in your organization to go along the journey? Because this is not a journey you in HR want to go on alone. And, uh, so those are, the, those are our questions. Sort of the standard definition, uh, a system that processes information, and this is what I think is important, makes decisions using human intelligence. Um, I wrote the Future Workplace Experience that came out last year and interviewed Diane Gerson from IBM and about five or six other IBMers. And one of the things that I thought was really very surprising and impactful was the patent that, that uh, Diane holds as the CHRO of IBM along with a number of, an, another researcher on predictive risk retention. And so we talk about AI managing and processing data, but the real power is to be, to be able to make some predictions on that data. So think of this with this patent. Um, IBM uses this inside the organization as well as it sells it externally to be able to look at employees across the globe and look at their location, their, ge their geography, who their manager is, their job role, their engagement scores with uh, as long as their manager engagement scores and make some predictions as to who is likely to possibly leave the company, but then doesn't stop there, creates a, a playbook for managers on what to do about retaining top talent. So I think it's a really interesting example of how AI can get in front of helping us work smarter in HR. That's, I think, the bottom line here. How can we work smarter? So why, why aren't more executives um, adopting AI in the workplace? This is a really interesting um, piece of research from McKinsey, who does quite a lot of, and follows the topic. And see if you could relate to this in your company. Um, it's a survey of 3,000 executives across 14 industries. 41% admit they actually haven't adopted it because they're not sure how, right? So now my question is, well, what about HR? You know, how does that, how does that sit within HR? Well, it turns out, what do we think? Do we think more people are adopting it than the 41% in HR or less? How about a lot less? A lot less, okay? This is a, a, a peek at some research that we're releasing at the end of the month. We interviewed a sample of 600 
um, HR leaders across North America, actually only 6% are actively deploying HR across what I call the employee life cycle to enhance and transform that experience at work. So, so then the question is, what's, as I like to think of it, what's the art of the possible? What could you be doing differently across the employee life cycle? And this looks at um, how AI is being deployed across recruiting, onboarding, and learning and development. And I'm just gonna just briefly walk you through that to really think of, you know, this, this is happening today, and I'm, I'm proud of, of the course that we're launching in September because we've really, it's, it was created by and for HR practitioners by a board that include that included GE, Intel, Corning, EY, a lot of the practitioners that are actively using AI. So we heard a little bit about Texio from our first speaker, um, AI assisting in actually helping to write dis job descriptions. And what, what happens there is they're able to flag some of the words that could be biased. Now, full disclosure, I don't happen to agree with some of those words. For example, see if you agree with this. Um, they've identified, well, they've identified um, synergies and stakeholders as words to flag that are sort of male dominant. But here's one I definitely don't agree with. They've identified the word rock star as something that's biased against females. Well, I call my daughter a rock star every day. <laughs> so I guess they, ha they, they still have to interview me. Um, so, but, but Texio does have some impressive results, right? They're using artificial intelligence to um, look at um, video responses, gestures, intonations, and supposedly with someone where English isn't their first language, they're able to really identify their skill set in a more unbiased way. During the recruiting the chat bot, um, there are, we've, we've created a technology um, roadmap. There are actually 350, 350 venture-backed firms that are uh, AI firms that are targeting the HR space, right? Uh, that was, uh, that's a lot of them. Um, this, so recruit chatbot, we, I have two examples um, following from Marriott and Hilton. What impressed me as I was researching and writing this topic was how many companies that aren't in the technology space, that, that are forward-looking HR pioneers that are using AI to, um, to reinvent the, the sourcing, the interviewing, and the recruiting. Um, the, ca the candidate takes part in a video interview. You've probably seen Higher View and Montage, and this is you know, just really helping someone identify um, the, the responses that someone has in a video interview. Um, as we go through onboarding and employee service center, think of all the, the frequently asked questions that are the same by either by new hires um, that join your organization. And this is sort of a natural area for uh, AI to really help and improve that process. And then finally, um, learning and development. Um, I've identified a, a couple of really interesting firms that are using um, chatbots in the coaching and performance management process. So how many people have, have heard about the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, right? It, which basically says that if we remember the days when we were cramming for exams the night before, we now know why it never worked. Because, right? Because the more, you, more information you cram just the night before, the easier it is to lose it because you're not reinforcing that information. So there are a couple of really interesting firms that just do chatbots for learning reinforcement as a follow-on to face-to-face -face classes or online classes. So that just gives you just a, a, a sneak peek, right, of the possibilities of doing this. So, so now let's say you're going to say to me, okay, sounds good. 
but I actually want to see it in action. Well, you can do that, right? So here's my suggestion for you. Go online and pretend you're applying for a job in either Marriott or Hilton. And guess that's what I did when I wrote the Forbes blog on how AI is transforming the candidate and employee experience. So go to their career site and guess what you'll find? You'll be quickly introduced to MC, the Marriott career chatbot, and, and Hilton, the Alley chatbot. And they're going to just ask you some quick questions. Um, the chatbot will, you know, like what kind of job, where, your location, what are your skills, here's how you upload your resume. Think about it. If, for those of you that may or may not work in recruiting, the biggest issue in recruiting is that big black box that your candidates fall into when they go on that career site and they don't hear anything. So it's, a, it's an inspiration, and we, we don't have to think about what it could be. We can actually experience it for, for ourselves, right? And so with Marriott, they created that was a homegrown creation. With Hilton, they used an outside firm um, called Ali O, um, based in Silicon Valley, for you know, uh, creating that, that chatbot. So what can you do to be an, an HR pioneer in all of this? Well, I think there are some, you know, just, like, just with any other big change management process, uh, program, that's what we're going to think about. How do you create the urgency that this is something you want to experiment, pilot, create a proof of concept? The, way to, the best way to create the urgency is to co start collecting some data on what are those routine, how can AI be used to transform key functions within HR? Um, how do you educate business leaders on what your vision is? Well, you form a cross-functional team because you don't want to go on the journey alone, right? You want to bring along IT, you want to bring along employee experience people or customer experience people, branding people. You want to build your business case because you're going to be faced with a build versus buy scenario. You certainly want to use agile and rapid prototyping. And then finally, how do you really massively communicate what you're doing? And then finally, um, that's a little bit about the course, as, and uh, we'll be getting more information. I think to, to end with sort of one inspiring quote from Harvard Business Review, AI won't displace, won't eliminate jobs and managers, but managers who don't use AI will be eliminated by those who do. So think about that, and thank you, and I guess I'll be joining the panel. Thank you very much.